Transformers Prime was a computer animated television series that ran from 2010 to 2013. It had two seasons of 26 episodes, one final season of 13 episodes, and a feature length finale. The show has been regarded as one of the greatest animated shows of the early 2010s, winning nine Emmys and two Cine Awards, as well as continuing to have a loyal and dedicated community that still talks about it to this day. With all that said, the making of Transformers Prime was a complete nightmare. <laughs> Coming hot off the heels of Transformers Animated and Michael Bay's second movie, Hasbro were ready for their next big installment of their, at the time, biggest moneymaker. Veteran showrunners Jeff Klein and Duan Capizzi teamed up with screenwriters Robert Orkey and Alex Kurtzman to bring the show to life. Hasbro gave them the green light to go ahead with the show, but problems arose almost instantly. The studio's knowledge of the franchise was the Michael Bay films and nothing else. They wanted it to be like the Michael Bay movies. Hasbro gave the writers a huge book called The Binder of Revelation, which is nowhere near as cool as it sounds. The Binder was over 350 pages long and served as a production bible created by executives and other higher-ups at Hasbro, not the writers of the show. The show's writers, led by Duane Capizzi and Marsha Griffin, did not like this. They didn't want to be limited by whatever this stupid binder told them to do. Uh, according to former intellectual property designer at Hasbro and writer of the binder, Rick Alvarez, the binder cost over $250,000 to produce and now lives in the bottom of a drawer. The binder and Hasbro's insistence on creating a shared universe uh, wasn't just a pre-production issue. It was something that loomed over the rest of the series. It's alleged that during the early stages of the show's production, the studio resisted concepts and designs because to them, the only Transformers to ever exist were the movies. It was basically movies or bust. So let's take a step back for a sec. They have this big binder full of lore. They don't want that. They want to pitch ideas to the studio. The studio doesn't want ideas. They want Bay Formers. The team clashed with the studio often who were pissy that the writers weren't using their very expensive production bible. Hasbro wanted their big Transformers universe, going as far as to reach out to High Moon Studios to make changes to Fall of Cybertron so it'd better fit in with Prime, but the studio didn't want anything to do with the games. Each episode of Transformers Prime had a budget of $1.6 million and was animated by Polygon Pictures and supervised by animation veteran Dave Hartman. Man, seeing the shows he's worked on to be called a veteran, it makes me feel like an old shit. A show on prime scale featuring the number of characters, locations, and props, uh, it, it would take any other studio around two years to create. So how long did it take them to make one season of this show? <clears throat> now, look, I'm not going to get into a big whinge about crunch or anything. As far as I can tell, there was nothing malicious going on in this regard behind the scenes. Uh, but that being said, 10 months to produce 26 episodes is insane. And the fact that they did it and made the show look as good as it did, it, it raises questions. I don't know about you guys, but to me, Prime has almost zero atmosphere. The environments are dead, they're lifeless, and they're boring. Um, especially after coming hot off the heels of animated, it's a sheer contrast. The difference is that with 2D animation, you can draw whatever you feel like regardless of budget, mostly but Prime's expensive animation led to only a small number of characters, props, and so on being able to share a scene together during rendering. The atmosphere wasn't the fault of anybody really, it was just because of their technical limitations. A show with comparatively inexpensive animation like, say, Cyberverse, uh, is able to render a lot more because of how much simpler it looks. This rush to get the animation done wasn't the only thing that needed to be done sooner rather than later. Uh, Hasbro wanted it out ASAP and it got so bad that Rick Alvarez only had 24 hours to edit episode scripts before he sent them off to the recording booth. 24 hours to fix up a half hour of television. The writers had three seasons worth of story planned out, but by the middle of season two, they'd done everything they'd planned to do. Uh, that could be why season two is mostly made up of filler treasure hunt arcs and stuff, I don't know. The scramble to create season three got off to a strange start when Aaron Archer stepped down as Hasbro's design director to become vice president of the company, being replaced by Joshua Lamb. Lamb demanded serious changes. We need dragons! Optimus Prime should be green! We're reformatting the show into Beast Hunters! If two plus two is four, right? And five plus five is ten, okay. What the fuck is this? I didn't see- Okay, now before we continue, let's talk about HasLab. HasLab was a department of Hasbro created in 2009 that was responsible for pitching and crafting new Transformers media. They created the production bible that was so quickly discarded, but they still had a stake in Prime Story to some extent. So when this sudden reformat happened, the design team were upset that the toys they were designing uh, wouldn't be in the show, 
The studio was mad that season three changed at virtually the last minute. And while these two fought, Haslab became stuck in the middle to try and clean up the mess, alongside trying to change everybody else's projects when the studio rejected the Cybertron games. The new design director wanted control over the show and demanded bizarre, unnecessary changes that basically doomed it. Overnight, the original series three plan was lost to the ether. And soon after, Hasbro planned to cancel Transformers Prime at the end of its third season, despite the writers already planning its fourth. We're gonna stop that. We're gonna stop that right now. Prime's budget was already ballooning out of control. This show cost Hasbro so much money that they closed Haslab and opted to not make any major investments into Transformers. Not for a while, anyway. Breakdown and Arachnid's celebrity voice actors were some of the first major cuts taken in the midst of the second season, writing out both of the characters to save money. They were followed by Silas, Hardshell, and Dreadwing. This abrupt shrinking of the cast in the second season led to a lot of active plot threads and stories just being completely dropped. To put it bluntly, Hasbro never had any control over this show, or this big universe they were trying to make. It, it didn't help matters when the studio, independently of Hasbro and Haslab, tried to claim Transformers Rescue Bots was a spin-off of Prime. I guess the lesson we can take away from this is the lesson that so many other studios have learned the hard way. Uh, if you want a big connected media universe, don't force that shit. Every studio wants to have their Avengers Endgame, but they don't realise they need their Iron Man first. Hasbro just weren't prepared, and it inevitably led to the show's end before we could see all that weird shit they had planned for the fourth series. We knew where we were going to go, we knew where we wanted it to end, and we, we had the concept for what the follow-up show would be, and, and if you ever heard of a character called Thundertron, we yeah. were thinking pirates. They go back to Cybertron. 13 pirates, and there were 13 colonies. And each Transformer was from a colony. Gobatron and the and Pirates? Cosmos. And he was from Gobatron. And we uh -huh. created this one scene where you see the reflection, see reflection like of a planet in a Cosmos eyes, and then there's an explosion, and it leaves the apple which floor. Autobots live or, which Decepticons live or die, as long as Knockout stays alive. Given all this nonsense, this stupid drama, it, it's actually crazy that Prime turned out as watchable as it did. I think a following was a given, considering how the franchise already had a large fan base, but the reach this show had under its circumstances is incredible. Aligned may have been a huge mess, but you know what? It gave us two pretty beloved shows and made the franchise more popular, the ever-growing shipper crowd of the time. I'd like to thank the Transformers Wiki for providing and citing all of the information in this video, as well as Tumblr user Sunny Butty for the evidence for taking pictures of Rick Alvarez's TFCom panel regarding this matter. I tried to get into contact with anyone else who worked on Prime for further information, but nobody got back to me. I'm sure there are more sides to this story, there's gaps that need filling, but from what we know, we can paint a decent little picture of what went on behind the scenes of Transformers Prime.